See all the acceleration, all the corners. Nice. Woo! <laughs> This is a lot of fun indeed. Yes, that's the VW Polo GTI facelifted version here with Thomas and Autogefühl. All the details, let's go. New headlamp design here with this dual signature and also the red stripe for the GTI, stronger lower part and here also with honeycomb style then. Headlamps now come standard with the Matrix LED IQ light, otherwise an option for the Polo, the GTI gets it at standard. And you've also seen it, here the fog lamps in the lower end. The length is at 4 meters 7 or 160 inches and whereas a base Polo would even start with 14 inch wheels, here the GTI either 17 or optional 18 inch wheels, these are the optional 18 inch wheels, and then also with bigger brakes and red brake calipers, really cool. And the red GDI accentuation right here. And it especially works very well with the white exterior color, doesn't it? Black mirror caps and also tinted windows here in the rear. Overall, a very cool, sporty styling, isn't it? In the rear, tail lamps here, new design, horizontally stretched with this extended area. This gives more width to the vehicle than again the red GTI logo and real exhaust tips. So once again, clean, sporty, very consistent like that. What about you? And this thing here goes 240 kilometers an hour or 150 miles per hour maximum speed. But of course, it would take time to reach that. We will try today on the German motorway on the Autobahn. Whereas the normal Polo only gets the three-cylinder, one-liter engine, here the GTI exclusively gets the two-liter four-cylinder. Now with 207 horsepower, seven horsepower more than before, and acceleration vehicle goes from 6.7 to 6.5. Only available with the seven-speed dual-clutch transmission. Car key looks like this, a classic one, but I think this one is better than the new high gloss ones of the Golf. Door closing sound. Mm, no, the from the Golf is definitely better. Not too good, right? Inside of the doors, this is hard pack. For a base pole, that would be okay, but then for the GTI at 30,000 euros, mm, ah, okay. But then again, they can't change it for the, just for the GTI, that's the thing. Soft at least here for your elbow. And here we also have red accentuations. You do not have to go for this one. But of course, in a way, with the red accentuations on the outside, it's kind of a cool combination. And then also these special sport seats here for the Polo with the Hounds tools in the middle part. Caro, we would say in Germany. The red contrast stitches here on the outside. And these sport seats also have more bolstering here. And also in that shoulders, the shoulder part, especially here. Look at that. So pretty cool. You can also get microfiber seats. But then they are actually a little bit straighter in this form. So it will also change the seat form. Seating position in these sports seats actually very decent, doesn't feel so small and also good comfort also for tall people here with 1m86, 6x1, still enough headroom left and you have a lot of side support then here. Remember when you go for these velours, art velour seats, the microfiber seats, then you won't have so much bolstering at the side. They will both be fine actually, but I think I would stick with these, with these standard sports seats. They are just more spectacular and also very good in comfort actually. Steering wheel. Pretty big size, up and down, in and out, and you'll find a nice position, definitely. And then 10.25 inch screen on the left side. This is standard for the GTI, otherwise an option. It's only flickering on camera, not for your real eye. Right side here, the eight inch screen would be already standard. This still has knobs then, which is better to me, I think. Here, even for the GTI, an option, the 10.25 inch screen, it looks cooler, is a little bit wider, but missing the buttons here only has hashtag capacitive BS buttons. Let's soon take a closer look. Here in the lower part, you have this new climate unit, and this looks cool and clean, and for a capacitive solution, it's also fairly easy to control, but I would prefer the normal manual one. In the German configurator, this is an option as far as I saw, and you would still get the standard normal dials. In the UK, it seemed like this would be standard for the GTI. Hmm, gotta check the details there. Illuminated USB-C chargers in the lower part, also with inductive charging pad here, this is quite handy. Apple CarPlay and an auto wireless connection, and then the seven speed DSG shifting lever here. Um, has a good grip, actually cool styling, and 
Then left next to it, you decide the driving modes. Infotainment system, you have here in the vehicle controls also sport gauges, for example here with it. Performance monitor, G-force meter and so on. Then the normal main menu and this is kind of like in, let's say, an older generation of the software. And that's the good thing because the very newest ones are kind of bogus. And here there's this, um, let's see, maybe this one, uh, there's this optional beat sound system in this one and considering for a small vehicle it's actually quite decent sound so for music lovers that beat sound system will do fine um, yeah considering the segment of course then back to the Volkswagen menu let's take a look at the you know at the own GPS like this it's also somewhat okay here could be a little bit more responsive but definitely it works better than the all new systems in the all new cars and this is really important the drive mode selection this one does not have DCC, even if the Volkswagen UK website claims the dynamic chassis control is not here, not the adaptive dampers. Optionally, you can get sport select dampers, and these are then activated in the sports mode, and they just make the setup stiffer, but they don't vary then in the dampening. Do not buy the sport select suspension because it's too stiff. It's kind of useless, I think. This car does have it, have it, and here what I would do, individual, I would maybe make the steering to sport, or then, um, you know, like engine sound, sport, and so on, but would leave the sport selection, selection here, sport select suspension on normal, it's just too rough, but even more to that while driving. On the steering wheel here, capacitive buttons, it's just harder to control them while driving. They look cool, they're also backlit, but come on. Instruments, you cannot have the CarPlay map here in the middle part, but you can have the normal GPS in the middle part right here. Again, it's not flickering on your own eyes or here also full screen. Well, and then one advantage of the Discovery Pro of this extended screen is you can have the map both right and left. If you have the Discovery Media, which still has eight inch and then the knobs, you can just have the map either right or left because the CPU then can cover more. <sighs> really? But still, I would stick with the more base version, save some money and still have some knobs to turn. And cup holders, not adaptive, so your bottle might be flying all over the place. And then underneath this armrest, some more space. Well, the platform is not too bad, but still a short vehicle. So when I'm here in the rear, I do hit the seat here with my knees with one with a six or six with one. It's soft. Um, yeah, but I can't really sit here very well, but headroom wise. This does work actually. The seating itself is actually quite cool. And also that we have the same sporty design like in the front here, you know, with the Caro structure as we say in, in Germany, or a hound's tooth is then, right? In the middle part, you cannot fold out anything. In the middle part, you can actually also sit. It's a little bit stiffer then, um, but it's actually quite okay. But mainly the outside seats and knee room rise, it does not work at all. Yeah, you just have to be a little bit smaller here and now you also have two USB-C charger. Nice detail, they're also illuminated. Trunk here with the folding logo that also houses the rear view camera to protect it against dirt. And then, here we go, the length is we are about 65 centimeters or 26 inches and the width, let's see here, you can score that meter of 40 inches. So actually well usable. Beneath here there is nothing much more actually. You can see there's the battery to access actually and you can fold the seats already for example from here and then push it all the way through. Welcome to Thomas's active driving lounge with the Polo GDI facelift and we put it here to the sports mode and the RPMs go higher. Oh, shifting also changes, shifting down earlier, shifting up later. Here also with the sport select dampers, that means now they are stiffer. You can also individualize it that you're in a sport mode but don't have the stiff dampers. But now let's put it all to the sportiest setup possible. Rolling start, 40 kilometers an hour, German Autobahn, let's go. kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour, and this goes even faster. What is this? Whoa, it's really windy today. We have to be careful a little bit, but 
Wow, stiff suspension in here in sports like that, was 220. Woo! Yeah, goes a little bit faster, but <laughs> this is no ring Nordschleife experience here almost. Woo! No lane change here, 80 inch wheels. Whoa, and considering we have super high wind speeds today, stably here on the motorway. Wow, great performance from these brakes. Now it helps that this car is super light in comparison to bigger sports cars and so on. I can decelerate very, very well. These brakes here are very sensitive. So just push them very gently because it hammers all the way. Oh, in the front there's a pole. Little, you know, there's not the face of there. You can see where it's even previous generation, I think, yeah. Um, where the tail lamps are not like horizontal. This is, I don't know, engine failure of a T6 or whatever. Yeah, seems like that. Hmm, not the best advertisement for Volkswagen in this review, definitely, as for this case. But here, the Polo GTI, well, this is a lot of fun. Here now in the tunnel, you can see all the red gauges, a little bit of ambient lighting here also in the middle console. That's also pretty neat. And, well, let's listen to the sound. I mean, I think it's more on the inside, but let's find out. Yeah, it's more what you hear on the inside indeed. Let's shift down again and let's see where... Yeah, so kind of low frequency what we hear on the interior. You see, I also use the shifting pedals here for the manual shifting. That's also a lot of fun. Pretty cool, right? So here also in the sports mode, the steering goes a little bit more resistance. That's coming handy, especially soon heading out to some windy corners, testing even more sporty performance. If you drive rather slowly, by the way, or cruise control motorway, you can score some fuel economy consumption figures like six to seven liters or more kilometers, 35 MPG US, 45 MPG UK. But that goes higher, of course, when you really floor that out. It is the thing, the small engines, high horsepower tune, it's never good for fuel economy. And here, yeah, even a little bit more punch, you know, that acceleration figure changed now to 6.5 seconds instead of 6.7 before the facelift. So, yeah, a little bit more horsepower, a little more torque. And yeah, we can use that. We also have this performance monitor here in the middle part. A lot of fun. At the same time, when you have these sports select -like dampers, the suspension is really, really stiff. So what I would actually do when you stop here at the traffic light, go to individual and put your own settings. For example, you can put everything to sports, but then the sports lacks suspension of normal or just don't pick it in the configurator. Let's take a short look here, normal driving mode. You can always select it here down there. That's um, okay. Maybe steering wheel select would be cool. It would be possible actually with this setup. Um, yeah, but they didn't implement it. As for this one, here we can set the cruise control. This has been updated as well. Capacitive buttons to control while driving, not that good actually, but the Polo now gets the full travel assist. And that means you can have the cruise control, but also the lane keeping assist at the same time. There it is. And then you can see the car is being kept in the lane, supposed to keep your hands on the steering wheel, but you see it's still, someone left the lights on here, interesting. That looks weird, right? Was it was it before in the first tunnel part? There we go. <laughs> yeah, about that. So let's go back to the sport mode. And now 80 kilometers now when we're already at speed. Let's go. Wow, this goes really quick, man. 160. And here now this longer bend. Wow. This is really cool. So not trying to exaggerate it here now. And the sport suspension here, the sport select. Um, and this really feels like being on a racetrack now. Steering wheel could have a little bit more resistance even here at higher speeds in the sport, but overall actually pretty good. And for a small car, it behaves very, very neutral and good. And the handling here at these higher speeds, now once again, 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. Wow, and the brakes are really phenomenal. This is really awesome. So. This is one of the vehicles where you, f you always feel in control and you 
you exactly know what you're doing and where to put that car. It also has this electronic differential lock in the front, so the front axle. This is actually to improve accelerating out of the corners because otherwise you might have yeah basically some kind of torque steer that you know you're being steered although you do not want that but let's see let's move it even more in a dynamic way and see how this differential is playing out all right sport mode once again awesome loose branches on the road from the recent storm here so even more challenging conditions stiff suspension mode and let's see how that one turns in in the corners and also the differential let's see how the acceleration out the corners nice Woo! <laughs> this is a lot of fun indeed yeah some kind of loose rally ground here because of these branches next corner yeah i see of course the front wheel drive puts me out understeers a little bit but considering front wheel drive and small vehicle a lot of fun here still to drive it wow super nice this really feels like really wow i mean this is the proof that you don't have to buy the most expensive car and still you can have so much fun this is what the polo gti is all about actually yeah of course rear wheel drive would get me better out of the corners here the differential lock you know rather controls it that they don't have too much understeer actually yeah but still considering whew, the price and also the size of the vehicle here so much fun to put that small light vehicle in every single new corner great what about the hyundai i20n we already have one video of that and we can also deliver in the driving review if you like and of course when you want to see the normal polo facelift like a polo r-line for example tune in here